When we bought the tract, it had been cut over and was in longleaf pine and slash pine. And our, our management plan was to have a family tree farm with an emphasis on timber as well as wildlife. And the wildlife component was just as important as the timber. And fortunately, we are in the uh, historic uh, boundaries of the native longleaf that was in Texas. It's, uh, they refer to it as the longleaf ridge. And when we started looking at longleaf, it was just a, a no-brainer that we would plant longleaf because of all the benefits that you um, derive from longleaf uh, pine in, in terms of habitat. It's just fabulous habitat. One of the things about longleaf plantation to make it, uh, to optimize it and to get the desired result, you have to burn. And so we went to school on that and we do our own burning and we try and burn half of the place uh, each year. And so we're on a, a two-year rotation. And you're not going to be able to burn every year. Like, for instance, we didn't get to burn last year, just didn't get any burn weather. But burning is extremely important for longleaf pine. It, it, it's an ecosystem that evolved with fire. And what it does is it, it releases your trees and allows the, the native grasses to thrive, which is what your ground nesting birds and turkey and really all the other wildlife really need uh, to flourish in a longleaf pine plantation. This portion of the farm was burned approximately two weeks ago and one of our primary objectives uh, for this burn was to eliminate some of the more volatile fuels such as yopon. Uh, this plant to my left here is a yopon tree and it's a woody shrub that has a very waxy oily leaf and so when it gets ignited it burns very hot and flares up and you can see that this this longleaf here was burned about two-thirds of the way up. It's undamaged, so long as you don't kill the terminal bud of this tree, the tree survives. Um, by, by conducting this burn at this time, it also releases our pine trees, re restores uh, nutrients uh, to the soil that encourages them to, to grow and for this little guy here to pop out of the grass stage. Now he, he looks like he's possibly damaged or, or injured, but in truth and fact he's not, and he's already greening up and hopefully encouraged to uh, jump out of the grass stage. And we refer to the grass stage as, as the lonely pine, uh, the way they evolved, they spend their first few years developing a root system, and while they're doing that, we call that the grass stage. And then once they've done that sufficiently, they pop out of the grass stage and are very competitive. Another benefit from this burn is to knock back plants like this uh, American Beautyberry, which is one of the primary forbs uh, utilized by white-tailed deer. Now this, this shrub will come back from its roots with new foliage that's very nutritious and beneficial to our deer. I need a place to get out of this dirty city. <laughs> and um, Sabine County is a beautiful county and it's, 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 it's mostly national forest and um, this property was historically in Longleaf and that's what we wanted to do is restore it to its original um, uh, form, if you will. The habitat that the Longleaf Pine Plantation creates for your wildlife is just phenomenal. And the recreational component for us is just as important as long-term uh, financial gains. And we didn't buy the place to sell it. I bought it to restore it and pass it to my children. One of the main reasons that, that my wife and I have bought this property and, and are doing what we're doing is because we want to leave it to our children. Um, I've got a 21 year old who loves to hunt and loves the place and I've got a daughter, she's 13 and she loves the outdoors and my youngest son is 11, he loves to fish. And so we, we did this uh, for our family and to leave something uh, lasting for our children. Um, and it's a place that you can go and be close to nature and in this hustle bustle world that's just just knowing that you have that place to go is it really gives you peace of mind. You know another consideration that, that, that was important to my wife and I is that we just wanted to do what's right by the land 
And this property um, is an ecosystem, the, the, at least the ecosystem we're, we reestablished, is an ecosystem that's in, it's on life support. Uh, there used to be, I don't know how many acres in Longleaf, but it was all along the Gulf Coast, Florida, Florida to Virginia to, to Texas. And there's very little of it left. And it's such an important and wonderful ecosystem. It's just a shame that more people aren't embracing it. So we're, we're real pleased at what we've done and we're gonna continue to do it. It's a historic site called Fox Hunters Hill. And it has, uh, it's a longleaf pine ecosystem. And it's absolutely be beautiful and gorgeous. And we have a good working relationship with the U.S. Forest Service. We have an agreement, a cooperation agreement, where they can undo or not have to use their fire lanes. And when they burn Fox Hunters Hill, our agreement is that they burn the north half of our, the south half of our property, which eliminates a lot of erosion on the national forest and eliminates the. Uh, uh, the amount of fire lanes that have to be prepared every time we burn. We have, um, ha have a really good relationship with the uh, NRCS. They're just a wonderful organization. Um, they provide technical assistance, uh, financial assistance, uh, guidance, and moral support. They're really, really uh, a good group of people, and the folks that, that we've dealt with there are just outstanding. Um, and we have a current contract with them right now. Uh, but our first contract with them on this track uh, was in 2007. Mike is one of those unique landowners that uh, it, it takes somebody special to get out there and uh, to find someone who's really interested in Lone Leaf and, and what it takes in order for Lone Leaf to succeed. The challenges for Lone Leaf restoration are that you've got to do it right. You've got to get a good herbicide job. You've got to get a good, you have to have good site prep. And Longleaf doesn't like competition, but if you'll do it right, it's really not that difficult. And the NRCS has been instrumental in making sure that we, we got it right and we've, we have very little mortality uh, in, our, in our stand. Most people I know uh, that have family farms in East Texas, the recreational component is very important. They want wildlife, they want to hunt, they want to see their wildlife and they also want to manage for, for their timber. And if those are your goals, Longleaf is a no-brainer because anyone, if, you, if you drive around East Texas and you look at the, at the timber company tracks, there's absolutely no sunlight hitting the ground. If you don't have sunlight hitting the ground, it's not happening for your wildlife. And with Longleaf plantation, you plant your trees on a spacing that allows sunlight to hit the ground. And every time you burn, the portion that you burn is a food plot because all of the American Beautyberry, all of the Greenbrier, all that kind of stuff that you're burning, when they, when they sprout out, they are chock full of nutrients. And so it's, it's just a wonderful ecosystem.